Welcome to the Heritage Day edition of ANN7 Prime. My name is Cindy Mabi, Sanbonani, Dumelang, Namaste, Nihao. We hope you had a wonderful Heritage Day weekend. And thanks again for joining us. Time now for the latest news headlines. ANC presidential hopeful Dr. Nkosazana Zamini Zuma rejects the tradition theory on succession. She says the party constitution does not bar anyone from contesting for the top job. Finance Minister Malu Sikikaba denies reports that National Treasury wants to use 100 billion rand of the funds in the Public Investment Corporation to bail out state-owned enterprises. Gauteng MEC for Education, Panyaza Lesufi, visits Trouble Club Sprite West Secondary School. He says learning will resume tomorrow and they will hold talks with Satu. An Egyptian woman, once believed to be the world's heaviest person, has died. Imam Ahmed had travelled to India earlier this year for a weight loss surgery. Our top story this half hour, the post of ANC president is not reserved for anybody and the leader is chosen through democratic processes by the branches. Addressing ACADA's forum in KwaZulu-Natal, ANC presidential hopeful Dr. Nkosa Zanadamini Zuma insisted that the ANC constitution makes no mention of inheritance to the post of ANC leader. The remarks follow a series of tweets attributed to ANC Secretary General Gwede Mandashe. The tweets have Mandashe batting for the deputy to succeed as the president to avoid a crisis in the party. Even an existing person in that position, after five years, if we still want that person, that person needs to be elected and can be contested. Yeah. And we have seen it happen. It's not, I'm not talking as telling a story, I'm talking facts. So there is nothing in the Constitution that says there are positions that are preserved for deputies. There is no such. Every position is contested. On Sunday, a series of tweets emerged that indicated that ANC Secretary General may have picked sides on the ANC succession battle. One of the tweets stated that if ANC elects a Ramaphosa as the president, a woman could be made the deputy. While the observation seems to be completely ignored, the fact that branches elect the leader, Mandashe has also drawn criticism for picking sides. You can't be a Secretary General of the ANC and behave as everything you can't be secretary general of the ANC and behave as if everything is a losing situation. Any comrades who have grown in the structure of the ANC should appreciate that the SG at any level must be the one that the river flows into, irrespective of what different leaders say. The SG must be able to bring members together of the ANC. Irrespective of what any member no bala we ANC must be able to bring our members together of the ANC. And here are some of the reasons why Mandashe's statements showing bias may be unbecoming of the Secretary General. As the Secretary General, he manages the processes related to succession. His preference for one candidate over another may fuel divisions in the ranks, and his stance as SG may influence the December elective conference. Mandashe may call it personal advice, but difficult to dis disassociate himself from the position he holds within the party.
And joining us uh, live in studio, Sfiso Mathango, Group Political Editor, Oliver Dixon, is a social political analyst. And of course, the lines are open to you. And we have the National African, uh, or rather the African National Congress spokesperson in Guazul Natal, Dumisen in Duli. Good evening to you and thanks so much for joining us. Happy Heritage Day. Happy so Heritage Day. So, this is the extension of it. Well, <laughs> many South Africans are still uh, enjoying the, the, the holiday. Uh, we, we have to deal with the politics of the day. What yeah. do you make of uh, the SG's alleged tweets? And we have been trying to get hold of him for a response yeah good evening and uh, the awesomeness that is african women on this day oh wow <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's, it. it's, it's, it's wonderful to celebrate heritage day but uh, before we get into the business of it uh, i think maybe it's to dispel the notion that we should dress up in african regalia and speak our language because it's the month of september and it's called heritage day in south africa this is our heritage mm -hmm. and we should embrace it every day uh, we shouldn't call it Pride Day. It is our heritage. It is our inheritance. And the first inheritance should be land, not that we wear regalia and sing our songs for one day a year. But we should inherit our land, inherit our languages, inherit our our regalia and our costume. It is our heritage. Absolutely. Yeah. I could have said it better myself, but we do have uh, a business here at hand. Uh, taking your calls on 011-542-2186. We have Stephen in Mamilodi. Good evening to you. And Sviso, we see you in Durban as well. Hi, Stephen. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yeah. How are Fine you? Thing. Fine, thing. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So what do you make of the alleged tweets and, of course, with the SG wanting to distance himself from uh, preferring one slate over another? Yes, uh, we prefer still over the of the next period of AC. Why? Uh, you know, he got a lot of experience. It's, uh, it's a long, long time. And, uh, you know, everything in AC, what's happening in AC, he's not a, a man, he's not a human in AC, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a position of the management, uh, the man, uh, president management. So we all, we, we, we prefer uh, still on the position, please, for the uh, uh, next president for ANC. Because if Gosselin uh, and Zuma takes over, we don't like that president anymore. We don't, the corruption will be big, will big and big and big every day. All right, Stephen, thanks so much uh, for those remarks. And Gosselin in Durban, Eteguini, hello to you. How are you? Apila Gunjani. Apila Gunjani. What I think... Greta Mantasha was right. It's because, you remember when Tabomteg was in charge, they wanted to kill that uh, strategy of ANC, of a deputy president to become a president. So now the same Zuma is using the same strategy Peggy used that let the organization down. So now even all these people who are backing Kosazana Zuma, is those people who are implicated in corruption, same like Sikhle Sigalala, that's why they are fighting for that, they, because they are corrupt. Even if they talk, even if she talk, she don't talk about people who are doing corruption because she knows her ex-husband, she's the head of the corruption. And another thing, so she keep on emphasizing the radical economic transformation. If they know about that... Because, Nata, uh, I just want to bring you back again. One of my accusations is not something that is necessarily tested in a court of law. So uh, what we're essentially talking about are perceptions or perspectives, are different views. But uh, I appreciate uh, that, you know, you, you made that analogy. But let's test it with our panellists. Uh, we'll start with you, Oliver, in, in your reaction to, number one, what the role of the SG ought to be in uniting a hugely uh, fractured ANC, and particularly if it does seem uh, or correct that he is siding or endorsing Cyril Ramaphosa as the next president. Okay, I'm not going to evaluate the substance of the statement he made, but I want to evaluate the statement from a matter position. One, I think it's entirely okay for him to have made such a statement. Here's why. I don't think people should divorce themselves from their roles, particularly because of the time. If people stand for certain things in organization, they should make that known. Importantly, we know exactly uh, President Jacob Zuma's position on which candidate he endorses. I don't understand why it should be any different for the Secretary General, for the Treasurer General, and for every, and for every other uh, executive position uh, within the ANC. 
But whether or not he's endorsing the right candidate is a different question entirely. But in this instance, I think it's important that we know what his position is. Does that, then the, the necessary question is, does it cloud his ability to perform his duties as a secretary general come the elective conference? I don't think so, because oftentimes those duties that we're talking about are guided by party principles, party procedure, and party constitution. And I think that's what remains important. Okay, let's get a view from ANC spokesperson in KwaZulu Natal, Dumisen in Tuli. Mr. Tuli, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, just your view, especially when, it, you know, pragmatic leadership, whether the SG uh, is within his rights to make his preferred um, candidate announced, or um, are you of the view that perhaps this is, uh, it could be more divisive to the party? Well, first and foremost, uh, thank you very much and good evening to you and the viewers at home. I think the, the first thing that I would like to say is that uh, there are expectations attendant to go to the office of the Secretary General and the incumbent occupying that office because of the responsibility which is so crucial in relation to being the custodian of the ANC policies in relation to being the last point of contact in preparations for conferences of the ANC. Now, it has never happened in the history of the ANC that a, sector, a sitting sector general of the ANC will be very bold and go out to support this or the other comrade in a contestation towards the conference of the organization. And the, the, the concern that uh, some of us have is that the SG is still expected as a custodian of this process to take decisions in a manner that will not only be fair, but that will also be seen to be fair and objective. Therefore, the decorum of that office remains profoundly significant, and it must never be tainted by the articulations and the assertions of the incumbent. I heard one of your, 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 your panelists in the studio is arguing that uh, the Secretary General is one of the leaders of the NC can and should be allowed to express his own views uh, with the hope that uh, that is not going to cloud his judgment in the course of entering his work. I hope that analyst does appreciate the fact that uh, at times perceptions become much more larger than the reality in terms of how you are handling a particular situation. We, we, we do not have a problem. I think all of us would not have a problem with the Secretary General having a preference about who should lead the ANC in the future. But how the sitting SG articulates and expresses his view in that context must not be in such a manner that uh, it has a potential to question the extent to which his office can be objective in presiding over the same processes and exercises that must produce the outcome of the leadership, which may be or may not be in the interest of the SG. We stay on the line, Mr. Ntuli. We have callers from Itegwini, Spongiseni, and uh, Sandy as well. We'll start with you, Spongiseni. Good evening to you. Welcome. All right. Uh, let's go to Sandy in uh, Durban. Good evening to you. Good evening, uh, and good evening and welcome to all your members of your panel. Thank you. Uh, thanks. I'd just like to say, listen, like... Like the previous uh, analysis, uh, political analysis indicated, that there was no problem in the SG pronouncing his preference because the president himself has already pronounced his preference. So why do we draw, uh, why do we draw a difference between the position of the SG and, and the president, number one? And number two, the fact of the matter is that Nkosuzana Zuma has proved to the entire continent that she has been a failure because there's been no peace in any of the African countries that she has brought. There's no investment to Africa that she has brought. How do you expect her to perform in, in South Africa? Again, thank you so much for your perspective, Sandy. Uh, your views, you saw in that, whether the SG has broken protocol in, in his utterances. I don't know which part of international relations Sandy is referring to, but that is not true. One of the core values and uh, frameworks of the AU is to bring peace. Uh, the peace is also dependent on a country in the same way that the AU cannot involve itself 
in the discussions of the elective conference here in South Africa, unless the caller is uh, expecting Ms. Nkosa Zanadlamini Zuma to enter any country and declare peace. It is up to the soldiers and the politics of that country. I don't think that's a fair specimen uh, to judge her on. Uh, judge her on South African politics and the work that the AU has done, but I don't think you can judge the AU chair on the peace of a particular yeah, nation. Yeah, I appreciate the clarity. I, I we'll come back the, sorry, the, for the protocol. Yeah, the reality issue. of Mr. Mantashe making those statements is not just a clerical call uh, on a factional line. He is making a statement to say he's been the SG, and the SG, such as Oliver Tambo, can rise up the ranks to be the president. That is indeed a factional move. Uh, I don't know how the president, uh, uh, you know, suggested to South Africa that he endorses Mangosa uh, Zanatlamini Zuma. It's not unfair to endorse a leader you believe. But in the court of public opinion, uh, you know, when you deal with the office of Lutuli House, you may sway many people with you to vote along the voter line that you vote for. So I don't think members of the top six should campaign uh, for people who want to be in public office. If Mangosa Zanadlamini Zuma campaigns, allow her to campaign in peace. Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa does that, allow him to campaign in peace. I've got a problem when members of the top six join a slate and then they say, I think you should vote for Mr. Ramaphos, because you are a leader in your own right. And I think those perceptions or persuasions or comments by Mr. Mantashe might most likely sway me to vote with what he believes. I don't think he should use his power and his rank and file within the ANC to persuade voters. I'll get I think your it's reaction. Unfair. Yeah, I'll get your reaction in, in a moment. Uh, Press Wellington, Bisa, good evening to you. Yes, good evening, Cindy. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Thanks, member. Mm. Yes, yes. Uh, I just want to make this comment. Uh, I think that uh, what is important here we need to recognize is that uh, uh, General Secretary of the ANC is an angel of the party. And uh, for him to make such a statement is very disturbing. Uh, I heard him uh, also, I read to the Twitter saying that uh, Tambo headed over Mandela. And then this thing, we need to remember that this is not a kingdom. It's a democratic process. And the EAMC constitution, there is no way where you see things of culture. All of the issues that are there are constitutional issues, and everyone has the right in terms of to contest within the ANC position. And if GS have a suggestion uh, which is one to raise, we believe that we have to do that uh, in his branch uh, as a member of the ANC, not in the public domain, because the dilemma that is creating is that as and when he's going to the branches of the ANC, he wants to address he might raise the tensions because we might feel that uh, he's already uh, taken a slight of the side of supporting uh, the certain candidate. President, thank, President, you, well, thank you so much. You sound like a, a member in good standing uh, in, your, in your branch. Thanks for the clarity yes. and the uh, politics 101. Uh, we go to Durban now. Tulisa, good evening to you. Uh, good evening uh, to you. Good evening to the rest of the panelists. I just, I, I just want to make this following comment. Um, I think there seems to be a distinction. You know, one of your analysts says President Zuma has already given a, his own preference. The, the distinction here is the roles and responsibilities of a president of the ANC and that of the Secretary General leading towards a national conference are different. The SG presides over processes. There are certain decisions that at the office of the SG needs to make that will either favor one side or another. Now, what is important here is that you need a person like Comrade Khalima Mushante leading up towards 2007, who is able to be accessible from both sides or even six sides in the case of the current politics. You don't need a person who is going to be seen to be siding as with a particular side or a particular uh, slate, if you may call it. But as a person, as a member of the ANC, the Secretary General may express a view in his branch in the Eastern Cape. Uh, I understand he's a member in the Eastern Cape. He may go to the Eastern Cape and have a position to say, this is what me as Gwede Mantashe, I am thinking. But for him to take platform uh, and speak on as a Secretary General and express a particular perspective, mm. I think it's, it's very wrong. All right, Chilisa, thanks so much. Oliver?
So I think that the call is right. There is a distinction between the role of the president and that of a secretary general, particularly leading up to an elective conference. I don't think that distinction is significant enough for us to say he shouldn't be making those stances. Because here's the difference for me. Uh, how different is uh, Gweda Mantashe endorsing Sir Ramaphosa versus Gweda Mantashe contesting for presidency himself and making those sort of statements? There's absolutely no difference. But compare that to the president, now Jacob Zuma in this instance. I don't think that Gweda, like, and I'm going to need a lot of convincing to change my mind on this. I don't think Gwede Mantashe has any more sway in the direction and influence of the party than Jacob Zuma does, particularly in this time right now. So someone needs to explain to me why it's okay for Jacob Zuma to do it. And I know Sviso says no one in the top six should be making that declaration. I'm unwilling to concede to that as well because I say again, how is it any different from a member of the top six endorsing another top six member uh, versus them running themselves? Those sort of statements carry the same weight and they also have political ambitions beyond December. So I think even though they hold certain positions, they should be able to make their political ambitions clear to us as to what their uh, political ambitions beyond December are and they should be allowed to pursue them. Again, I am confident in the procedural uh, standards of the ANC. I'm confident enough in the procedures and the guidelines of the party and how the party is structured to know that the position of the Secretary General will not be able to be unduly influenced because we know we will hold him to account if that is the case. All right, Mr. Ntuli, your view whether the SG indeed has personal agency and in his own capacity to make certain declarations and how different is it uh, from uh, the, the endorsements of other leaders? I sympathize with the, the ignorance of Olive, Olive or Olive. I'm sorry to, if I pronounce the name wrongly because he doesn't really, uh, he's not familiar with the ANC. The Secretary General, when we say the Secretary General presides over processes, it is to the extent that uh, that office becomes a final arbiter on certain processes leading to the conference. Now, that office does not only have to be seen to be objective, but it cannot depend on the strength of the argument from the incumbent that I am objective. It must be seen and be understood to be objective. But you see, the other disturbing uh, comments that uh, I think we need to engage the SG. Earlier on, unfortunately, I had an opportunity to talk to him, and he did honor up to all of those tweets. And my concern was that, look, the SG can't say President Zuma must hand over power to the deputy president if he does not want to create a crisis of experience at the time when President Mpegi was leaving the office. The implied meaning to that statement is the fact that uh, President Zuma has made up his mind and probably even informed the SG privately or publicly that I am not prepared to hand over power if that power does not go to the deputy president, if that power is going to the de sitting deputy president of the ANC. Now, I think the Secretary General of the ANC cannot degenerate to that level in terms of uh, expressing his own opinion. I don't have a problem with SG having a preference. He's a leader of the ANC, he's a member of the ANC, it is expected that, like all of us, he will have a view about the, lead, the next leadership of the ANC. But he occupies the office that nobody else anywhere in the ANC throughout the country occupies. And that is the office which has the responsibility to ensure that, among other things, it pulls the organization as a whole together. That even if the president were to be seen in Kimberley, singing the song that was praising Common Kosovo and Islamic Zoom, but people must still, be, must, be, must still be able to say, but there is a sector general whose primary responsibility is to contain all the puzzles and ensure that the organization is able to overcome challenges despite the fact that it's going to a national conference. Mm. That is the point that we are making about the SG. We are not saying that he's not entitled to have a view. It's impossible for him not to have a view. In fact, it would be irresponsible of him not to have a view. But the conduct and the manner in which that view is articulated and expressed in public becomes, becomes paramount. Yeah, all right, Oliver, just a quick response. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ntuli. Mr. Ntuli said earlier that he is comfortable with the Secretary General going to the Eastern Cape, to his branch over there and declaring his view over there. Again, I don't understand how that's any different from him making that view on Twitter. Given that information would have come out of that branch, the rest of the country would have known who he supports, where, and w which would have been the same on Twitter. Again, yeah, there's a normative issue which is not being dealt with. Whether or not the Secretary General makes that view, 
we need to evaluate and adjudicate whether that view sways the direction in which the party as a whole yeah. goes. Certain so members briefly, will. Yeah, very will briefly in the intent, or rather the, the weight or the, mm. the ramification of making certain public declarations could have mm. on the outcome of uh, the elective conference. Once again, I think I'm inclined to really disagree with my learned colleague on my left. This is about a handover. And Mr. Mantasha cannot suggest that there is a handover ceremony. There's no CEO here. We are talking about an elective conference. So making a statement like President Jacob Zuma does not want to hand over power to Mr. Cyril Ramaphos, these people will go to the polls. The branches will elect their leader. So when one suggests there is a handover, it's like there's a ceremony and President Jacob Zuma being the president will induct the president that is coming. December is ahead of us, and the branches of the ANC will vote. Why does Mr. Mantasha want to get in the middle and make suggestions as if President Zuma has the right to elect a leader? It is the branches of the ANC that elect their leader. It has always been like that. That is a symptom we call democracy. All right, we're going to have to leave it there, gentlemen. We'll agree to disagree on this one, but I do appreciate your time on this public holiday. As Fiso Matlango, group political editor, and Oliver Dixon, a social political analyst, and on the line, ANC spokesperson in KwaZulu Natal, Dumisen in Duli. You at home, thanks indeed for taking the trouble to call in. We'll take a quick break and we'll see you on the other side.